with the release of the new season comes new season pass tanks and this is a review of the free king dragon that you can pick up as part of the season rank 75 rewards on world of tanks console and of course we're going to be doing a full review of the tank in today's video so let's get straight into it the first map is of course canals and the king dragon the key features of the tank is that it has that high alpha damage gun for a medium tank also gets somewhat armor you know you're probably not going to be able to bounce like Jaeger rounds don't get me wrong but if you do angle in the right and correct way and of course when you're coming up against the right opponent then you can actually make the armor model work with this tank and also if you're using it um, you know as it should be used as a kind of a brawling medium tank then you can have some really really great results and of course that's what we've got in these two replays today now you'll see here a Udes 14 15 has made the uh, ultimate mistake of just coming out uh, into that position early on in the game of course we're taking this kind of position over here I always like doing this at the beginning of the game to kind of determine what the enemy team are going to be hoping to do within the game um, and that always gives me the opportunity to relocate or do something else we make a mistake here by actually shooting the tracks of the black prince there the 843 should have actually gone um, a little bit higher and hit the side armor which meant we would have pen so you can see me doing that now where you see me actually aiming higher and then of course we pen so we do get hit by the artillery, which, you know, tier 6 artillery, AMX 13 F3, you always know that that's a little bit of a stumper. So we don't want to get hit by him very many more times. And so we're kind of keeping a little bit closer to the left, although he's firing at someone else now because, you know, luckily artillery isn't always focusing me. But here we go. Hitting the Black Prince there, which is always a good result um, when you can kind of be in a top tier position where you feel like you can just stump people. And for example, a T-43 on the enemy team like that Russian um, or Soviet tier 7 tank is not particularly too great when it comes up against the higher tier opponents. Don't get me wrong, that tank is really, really fun to play. Um, but it does rely heavily on the scenario that you can get it into. But in this sort of scenario, it's terrible. And that's why he gets three shot by us and how we've managed to pick up 2250 damage done within this game already and it will continue right the way through and we'll hopefully be able to push out even more damage now what you can see us doing here is using the pretty decent mobility of the tank you can get up to about 45 kilometers an hour in pretty much all terrains uh, and of course you could go up to 50 just depends on the scenario that you're in and we go for the lower plate of the tiger 2 which somehow actually bounces don't know whether it actually hit the upper plate there by a little bit of rng coming <laughs> our way but of course let me know in the comment section down below maybe i was just aiming badly but you can see us doing something we probably shouldn't do but we ram him anyway just to, to try and get the uh, the damage there put a nice round hopefully on the move onto the t34 100 which of course we do and now we're in a scenario where we need to be a little bit careful because there are multiple tanks on the enemy team now we can get our revenge on the artillery piece there which we successfully do and because they're all going to be camping up on that hill area we need to be very very careful as to what we're doing here because you know we don't really want to get hit by all of the tds and stuff like that so we take a swerve over here we put this little rock in between us and now we're going to be the one that's going to be aggressive we're going to be the one hopefully fingers crossed to spot for our team because in this sort of game you know if your team are full of heavy tanks or at least um, tanks with very low view range then you want to make sure that you can take advantage of that by helping out your team now we are a little bit careful because there's a medium tank behind us we don't quite know what it is yet um, we put a nice round into the scorpion g's um, kind of well, not lower plate but we're going for the tracks there to retrack him hopefully we can hit another one but unfortunately we don't manage to and he kind of removes himself from the equation now there's a funny little graphical error I think going on with the uh, the King Dragon. You can see it's kind of got this weird glowing effect as if a round just hit into the back of the cupola. Don't quite know what's going on there. Maybe Wargaming just felt like my King Dragon decides it needs to be uh, glowing. But there we go. 3,321 damage done in this game so far and of course there are multiple tanks we can still take out we've got all of these tanks up here and so we're going to be a little bit aggressive i wouldn't recommend it in like 90 percent of scenarios just going alone but since we've already seen that the, the, the hit points of these tanks are also low 
and we can guarantee that we are going to be able to get um, a couple shots. And with the VZ44 now being aggressive and the fact that we've pretty much reloaded, we're, uh, we're pretty safe to assume that we can pretty much deal with this and albeit we are going to go over he doesn't even manage to pen us now we're going to aim for that lower plate because we don't want to actually mess up here and then we put one nice round into him we've got a borsig and we've got a scorpion g and we've got a stura meal of course we don't want to be getting hit multiple times so we have to be careful once again a Shmiel is obviously moving around, doesn't actually aim properly, waiting for us to actually come around that corner. So we're going to take advantage of that and put one into him. The uh, Borsig here, don't quite know why my internet decided it's going to lag out at that point, but oh well, we'll take it. And now there is a Scorpion G that's uh, thinking he's funny, he bounces off of us talking about that armor model that I said about. Uh, and then we just ram the Scorpion G, trying to push him over. It would have been funny if he flipped over, but don't manage to do that. And now it's time to just go after the T-77 that's left alive on the enemy team. Of course, it's seven versus one, so you'd assume that the T-77 couldn't pull it off. But we managed to do 4,657 damage, picked up 850 assistance, which you can do with the King Dragon. And that's exactly what you want. You want the games where you can get the combined damage. And with this game, we were looking at about, what, 5,600 combined, roughly, um, <laughs> to speaking. So not a bad result by any means. Um, and one that I really, really enjoyed playing. Of course, we don't manage to pick up the final damaging hit of the game to pick up the T-77. But that doesn't matter all too much since we did probably come top in this game. Did we come top? Victory, of course. And... Of course we did, 4,657 damage done, 1,991 base experience within this game, which is of course a good result. And we picked up 202,000 silver, which is one key aspect of the tank that is always really good. And you can see that the tank can block damage that can't be said for very many tanks in the game. We picked up nearly, well, 1,600 blocked damage, which is always nice and, of course, a great result. Let's jump into another replay where we can showcase just a little bit more about the tank as well. Now, the next replay is Hidden Village, and this is a fairly... Um, it's a map that's come back into the game fairly recently, and it's a map that I'm not too fussed on, like... It's kind of a bit of a boring map to play in my opinion because there's very little opportunity for you to kind of impact the game in different ways. I feel like most of the time like you can pretty much predict what's going to happen every single time. And so it gets a little bit stale. It gets a little bit like boring after you've played it multiple times because essentially like the same scenario always happens. It's either that the enemy team win the left hand side of the map and then they kind of push through or alternatively both sides of the map get won by the enemy team or your team or whatever. Um, and then you basically get sausage sandwich like the remaining uh, enemy forces or your forces or whatever. And therefore you lose the game and there's no real like mismatch of like multiple people going different ways and then winning the game in a, in a variety of different ways, which kind of makes it boring. Um, after a while, of course, if you were to do like 7000 damage, it's going to be fun. But, you know, how fun is it when you're doing like your normal amounts of damage and it's, yeah, it's pretty much the same every time. But regardless of this map, what can we do? Well... With the King Dragon, since it's a top tier game, we can kind of get into this sort of game and we can put out damage. This is always a position I like to go into at the beginning of the game because what you can do is you can get shots onto these sorts of people who are kind of sat out in in the open. Now, unfortunately for us, we don't manage to actually pick up any damage on the King Dragon there, which is annoying, but, you know, it's nothing, not the end of the world. And what we can do from this point, after the Emil has decided he's going to finish shooting us with uh, very little chance of penning, we can just side scrape off this building. And this is what I was on about in the first replay, whereby, you know, you can actually side scrape with the King Dragon pretty well. Now, the turret armor of the tank, don't get me wrong, can be penned pretty easily by any of the high alpha TDs. So don't think that you're going to be able to do too much against them. But what you can see us doing here is talking about a high alpha TD. We bounce one off of the Borsig or bounce from the Borsig, I should say. Which is nice, and that is definitely something that you don't see every day. And now hopefully we can pick up this uh, AMX 1375, which we do. Um, and we've had a pretty good result here. Now, no one's going to really be complaining at picking up this much damage in the beginning. <laughs> and we can hopefully aim to just help our and support our team that are over here. And this is the scenario that I'm on about, whereby 
the enemy team have won the right hand side of the map or the, like the um, northeastern side of the map which means that we're in a bit of a disadvantage now I make a silly play there to be honest with you should have probably gone fully around that corner and put a nice round aimed into the lower plate but getting back to it the enemy team have won the northeastern side of the map which means that we are in a significant disadvantage now because we have to and I mean we have to win this side otherwise you know we're gonna get sausage sandwiched and as I always say sausage sandwich is not always the best idea when you're playing world of tanks um, and this is what I feel like happens all of the time on this map and why I feel like it's a little bit boring is if you get into this position and you don't win this side and the enemy team does actually go to the northeastern side and win that then yeah you basically never win because you get opponents shooting you from all sides all flanks and yeah it ends up with you just getting uh, just completely annihilated and what you can see me doing here is using this rock we're just side scraping at this point we're not probably going to be able to bounce too much um, but we put a nice round into the TNH now that's not a tank you want to be coming up against that's the tier 8 um, new Czech heavy tank that's in the game and because that tank actually has a bit of a pumper of a gun it means that we can lose a lot of our hit points very very quickly and albeit we do need to take out the Emil here because that tank is actually really, really annoying to come up against. We get an E75 TS pushing us from behind. And this is not a scenario you want to be in. We finish off the TNH because why not? But we do get taken out. 3,941 damage. But I thought that this replay really showcases how the tank can deal even in those bad scenarios where you feel like everything's pretty much gone wrong. And yeah, I really enjoyed just how good it feels to play the King Dragon. And it really is a good one. If you've played the Type 50, 59-2 it's pretty much the same sort of tank um, just with the skin and that's exactly how this tank plays really really fun really good at making money and of course you can have some fantastic games as well so hopefully you guys did enjoy this replay if you did make sure to like it and also if you enjoyed this one why don't you check out the gameplay and tank reviews playlist on the right hand side and also I have a really really nice update news coverage for next week as of the recording of this video that you can have a look at as well on the left hand side so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you there. Goodbye.